Coming up on WUFT's First at Five, hurricane season is ending. The impact and aftermath of this year's hurricane season in Florida. Plus, Trump's plans for mass deportations. The president-elect's potential plans once he takes office in January. And a Levy County animal shelter is struggling to stay afloat. How you can support at-risk puppies by the end of the week. First at Five starts right now. First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Bring out your long sleeves and jackets. We're seeing lows in the 40s this week, and you'll need to bundle up as you're heading out the door. We're seeing a cold front coming in following Tropical Storm Sarah's dissipation. Welcome to WUFT's First at Five. I'm Alex Lands. And I'm Natasha Holt. We've had a very active hurricane season, but it will come to an end in just 12 days. For now, we take a look over at I-75 overlooking Payne's Prairie, where traffic is light and the skies are looking bright and blue with temperatures in the mid-70s. But that won't last for long. UF meteorologist Tim Miller joins us now live with the weather forecast. Tim, can you tell us what we can expect throughout this week? Yeah, I sure can. Natasha, we'll start off with this afternoon. It's beautiful outside this evening. Currently at 75 degrees, 78 in uh, Bronson, 75 Ocala, Jacksonville at about 74 degrees. It's a perhaps a little warmer than it was 24 hours ago, but not by much. We've had really just a nice breeze and the humidity has been held in check, so it's been absolutely fabulous. Thanks to high pressure that's off the coast, we've been developing really a southeast wind, which will give us a little bit more moisture as we get into the next at least 48 hours, and that's going to increase moisture, which will increase our opportunities of some rain, which we're going to talk about before we talk about those cooler temperatures. Again, if you've got plans for tonight, everything looks to be great. Temperatures will fall into the low 60s under partly cloudy skies the rest of your forecast in just a few minutes as hurricane season comes to a close experts are taking a closer look at this year's storm activity and its broader implications hurricanes helene and milton brought significant challenges to florida this season causing widespread damage and testing the state's response systems as communities continue to recover the focus is now on rebuilding and strengthening defenses for future storms we spoke with UF meteorologist William Maxim, who discussed the accuracy of this year's hurricane forecast. We ended up with five major hurricanes this this year, and that was pretty close to what was predicted. We were seeing predictions around four to seven major hurricanes. That's exactly what we got. As hurricane season comes to a close on November 30th, Florida's focus now shifts to recovery and preparations for whatever next season may bring. Bradford County Fire Rescue is currently on the scene of a car crash where a vehicle drove into a pawn shop called the Lending Bear on Walnut Street in Stark. Paramedics are evaluating injuries and are, we're looking into the incident to gather more details. Fire rescue officials are asking you to avoid the area of the crash. Alachua County Sheriff's deputies discovered an SUV in the Santa Fe River. ACSO's Marine Operation Underwater Recovery Team helped retrieve this stolen car from Columbia County. The car was submerged in the river and found near U.S. Highway 27. Police are still investigating the event. President-elect Donald Trump's major campaign promise was mass deportation. Now, he says he'll use the U.S. military in the plan. However, he's not explained what the plan is. NBC's Alice Barr has more details from Washington. President-elect Trump signaling he intends to follow through on a campaign promise on immigration, responding true to a social media post saying he's prepared to declare a national emergency and use military assets for a mass deportation program. We're going to take handcuffs off ice, we're going to do the job, secure the country, protect the American communities and arrest the bad guys first. That amid growing scrutiny over the people he wants to carry out his administration's policies, especially his pick for attorney general, now former Congressman Matt Gates. Lawmakers in both parties are calling to see the results of a House ethics investigation into allegations of sexual misconduct and drug use that Gates denies. Of course it should be released, and that's not just Democrats saying that. The committee set to meet on Wednesday as House Speaker Mike Johnson argues to keep the report private because Gates is now a private citizen, having resigned from the House to pursue the AG job. Also facing pushback, President-elect Trump's pick for defense secretary, former Fox News host Pete Hegseth 
whose attorney confirms that Hegseth paid a woman a civil settlement last year after she accused him of sexual assault back in 2017. The attorney says Hegseth maintains his innocence and that the encounter was consensual. It's all leading up to a confirmation showdown in the Senate that's now shifted to Republican control. As these U.S. senators consider the president's yeah. nominees, they should remember why they're in the majority. The Trump team arguing the president-elect has a clear mandate for change. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. President-elect Donald Trump has named Florida Senator Marco Rubio as his choice for Secretary of State. If approved by the Senate, he'll become the first Latino to hold the position. Plus, a Senate position would be up for grabs, although his Senate replacement will likely not be named until early January. The move gives Governor DeSantis time to consider his options. Florida lawmakers will return to the state capitol Tuesday, and Republicans still hold supermajorities in both chambers of the legislature. They'll hold an organizational session that will include Senator Ben Albritton as incoming Senate president and Representative Daniel Perez as House Speaker. The GOP will continue to hold a 28 to 12 advantage in the state Senate while picking up one seat in the state House, giving Republicans an 85 to 35 advantage in the chamber. The Republican Party of Florida's chairman Evan Powers says voters sent the new lawmakers to Tallahassee with a conservative mandate. It sets the trajectory for our state, so we're all pretty pumped about what we've done as a Republican Party and where we're going. The 2024 legislative session will be begin March 4th, and Democratic Representative Fentrice Driscoll will officially begin her second term as House Minority Leader later today. Meanwhile, Senator Jason Pizzo will lead the Democratic Caucus in the Florida Senate for the next two years. Community support for Levy County Animal Services has poured in since a press release issued Friday. It stated the animal services building is facing significant challenges and was deemed unsafe for humans. The shelter needs all dogs adopted before a Thursday deadline. Right now, there's 11 dogs that still need to be adopted and three more deemed unadoptable and at risk of being put down. Dogs can be adopted by rescues like Poochie's Pet Rescue that gives these dogs, like Coconut, a second chance. All we need from our fosters is just that they take the dogs. <laughs> find a place to put them. Animal Services emphasized only the three unadoptable dogs will be put down if not taken in by a rescue. Tomorrow at 1 p.m., the Board of County Commissioners will hold a workshop to discuss improvements to the building. It's open to the public so you can help out these furry friends and staff working at the shelter. Up next, we take a look at one team that's giving kids with special needs the opportunity to just be a kid. How one little girl is shining on the soccer field when we return. You're watching WUFT TV News. Being able to walk, move, or even speak are privileges many of us take for granted. I met 11 year old Harper Yeomans, who struggles with all of these basic functions, and learned how she copes with her disability. <laughs> Wednesday mornings mean physical therapy for 11-year-old Harper Yeomans. She suits up and gets to work. Go, Harper. Go, Harper. Harper grew up like any other kid. She seemed like nothing was really wrong. She was um, a pretty happy baby. <laughs> but slowly, Harper's mom, Leslie, felt it in her gut. You know, she just seemed kind of weak. Something was wrong. I was a second time mom, and I thought that was odd. After befriending the walls of waiting rooms and doctor's offices. Everybody just seemed kind of clueless. <laughs> You're told she's just a little delayed. Leslie was still in the dark. She cried around the clock. We were in and out of the hospital. She became miserable. Oh. Good job, Harper. Until she finally got an answer. An answer. That was a good job, Harper. And a gut punch. Harper was diagnosed with Rett syndrome. There you go. She'll have the messages in her mind of the things that she wants to say or the things that she wants her body to do. A rare genetic disorder. But the message gets messed up from the brain to the other muscles. Leaving her nonverbal without control of her body. She's 100% in there. She is kind of trapped in a body that just doesn't work. Leslie says the hardest part. Right, let's do a little bit on your tummy, okay? Was the life she imagined for her daughter forced to change. When you realize you're expecting a child, you have this grand vision of ballerina classes or, you know, soccer, the things that 
bring them happiness, not just to keep them alive, but to play. And then when you do become a special needs parent, every dream was stolen away. You just keep getting knocked down and it's exhausting. Well, almost every dream. Taking the field, it's number 10 Harper Yeomans. Physical therapist Amanda Guevara is the head coach. We're all different, but we're all here playing the same sport together. She created Limitless Legends Football Club. I have so many patients that just they don't really have anything to come out and do. <laughs> An adaptive soccer team fit for everyone. There's no teams, there's no clubs, there's no groups that they can come together and do things. Giving every kid a chance to shine. Yeah! Amanda says it's the cheers in the crowd that make every moment worthwhile. The biggest joy that I get is just watching parents on the sideline, watching their kids be able to participate and play. You did it. From just beyond the action, Leslie watches with a full heart. A lot of times we are just in survival mode, and for that hour, we're not. We're just like everybody else. Watching unforgettable memories unfold. When they score, or, you know, they might have never felt that before. Amanda says Harper's energy is electric, lighting up the field. Oh gosh, Harper. <laughs> I think it's hard sometimes when you have somebody who might be nonverbal to really find out their personality, and she definitely has one. Leslie says Harper likes being the star on the field. She's more of a kid that wants the crowd to be watching her kick the ball around. And stealing the spotlight. Like, are you watching me? <laughs> What Leslie once gave up on is now possible for Harper. Like, wow, are you serious? Like, she could actually get there and, like, go fast, and she could experience this. With every goal scored, <laughs> she's still a kid who wants to get out and kick a ball around. A new goal on paper achieved. I haven't dreamed that for her for a long time. Showing the impossible is possible on the pitch. Alex Land. <laughs> WUFT News. Well, we have our with some warm weather, at least the early part of this week, and then it gets much cooler. We'll talk about how much cooler coming up with your forecast. You're watching WUFT TV News. Well, welcome back. We're going to start by talking about some warm temperatures. We had ourselves a really nice day today. Really not too warm. It was rather pleasant. We'll continue the warm temperatures tomorrow through Wednesday. Wednesday, though, a better shot at some showers and much cooler as we get into the next week. Finally, a real taste of fall headed our way. In the meantime, you look outside right now, you'd think that the satellite and radar was actually broken. It's not. It's just not showing any cloud cover. It's barely any clouds around to talk about. Not the case out, though, towards the west. This is a pretty strong cold front already producing snow in parts of the Midwest. This is going to be a severe weather outbreak already producing some big time storms out towards our west, and that's going to give at least part of the state an opportunity for some strong storms. Here's Futurecast takes us into tomorrow afternoon where we're fine. The big storms are out towards the west. It really won't be until Wednesday. That's when we'll have our best shot at some shower activity. My thinking is the heaviest activity remain well to our south, maybe towards closer to Tampa Bay. So here's sort of a snapshot, if you will, into Wednesday morning. So we'll get our fair share of a quick shower or two, but not a whole lot of rain here to talk about. Uh, really to speak about it when everything, suffered, when everything is said and done. Heaviest rain and showers really off towards our west coming up for tomorrow. That activity will stay there with the possibility of maybe a strong storm or two. For us, again, you're talking maybe a quarter of an inch or less uh, in rainfall. We could certainly use the rain and then after this front passes, I don't see another chance to rain for a while. So that's going to be a little bit of sad news there. But this is what's impressive. Notice our muggy meter. We go to the 60s where we have some humid conditions, but notice the bottom falls out here for Thursday and Friday. That's really dry air for us and dry air heats up and cools off quickly. So that just means some great weather. And of course, for the game coat weather 49 9 o'clock as we talk about Saturday morning, a lot of us will see the 40s. It'll be a really chilly morning for sure. And as look at our uh, seven day forecast. Yeah, here's the chilly temperatures not only in the mornings, but also in the afternoons. Take a look at those temperatures guys in the afternoons highs of the 60s when normally we should be into the 70s overnight low temperatures around 40 degrees and it wouldn't surprise me if our some of our like our colder locations could see some upper 30s but notice after Wednesday's rain it's abundant sunshine for the next several days that's your forecast 
Coming up in sports, you'll get all the updates on the high school football state title race. And a look into just how significant the Gators win against LSU is. All this and more after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. We start your sports block off with some breaking news in the world of high school football. Trinity Catholic's John Brantley has resigned from his position. This follows a 26 to 7 loss to Providence during the first round of the playoffs Friday. In a post on the social media website X, Brantley said in part, it's been a privilege to be a part of the Trinity Catholic football program since 2003. Brantley leaves behind a winning legacy, having 104 wins to just 48 losses, and helped more than 70 athletes play at the collegiate level. The Celtics made it to the state championship game last season, but ultimately lost to Cardinal Mooney. Florida fans are still celebrating the big win in the Swamp this past Saturday, where the Gators took down the previously ranked LSU Tigers 27-16. The game pushed the Gators to just one win away from a bowl game this season, a win they'll look to get at their last home game this weekend against Ole Miss. WUFT's Ana Simba has more on the story. The Florida Gators just chomped down their win against LSU with a final score of 27-16. The Gators are now one game away from being bowl eligible. The swamp was packed and Florida fans showed up in full support creating an atmosphere that made the stadium too much for the Tigers to handle. Even Billy Napier noted how much the crowd influenced the game. You know, I think we have to give the crowd a ton of credit. I mean, that place was electric tonight. Florida's freshman quarterback DJ Lagway's performance added to the energy, with the fans roaring his name throughout the game. Both teams came out swinging, but it was the Gators' defense that really sank their teeth into the challenge and dominated the line of scrimmage, posting seven sacks, which is more than LSU has allowed all season. Looking ahead, Florida hosts their final home game this Saturday against the favorite Old Miss. That was Ana Simba reporting. Keeping things on the football field, high school football is heading into the regional semifinals starting this Friday with local teams headed to a state championship. Last weekend, we saw teams get one step closer to Florida High School State Championships. Buhold speed out Evans High School 42-21. Vanguard took down Leesburg 35-10. Bishop Moore beat Eastside 35-6. Donellan won over Mount Dora 28-7. And finally, Newberry took down Palatka 24-7. WUFT's Talia Baya was able to get the details on the local Buholtz game. On Friday, Buholtz dominated Evans 42-21 to in a playoff battle. Now, what's the key to their impressive 8-3 record, you may be wondering? Their iconic trio, Justin Williams, DJ Hicks, and Keel McGriff, all very flexible players. Head coach Mark Weddemore put it best, saying, quote, anytime they touch it, it could be a home run. That was on full display Friday night. Hicks caught two touchdowns, Williams ran for two, and McGriff scored with a punt return. When asked about Williams adding dimension to the team, switching to running back as a receiver, Hicks said they know they can play anywhere that they want. Williams being in the backfield opens up a lot of opportunities for everybody else on the team. Now, Buholtz is just two wins away from being a fourth straight regional championship. They'll host Pace on Friday for the semifinals. Reporting for WFT Sports, I'm Talia Baya. Now, the Florida women's basketball team was handed their first loss of the season this past Saturday, making their overall record 3-1. and one. The University of Miami Hurricanes came into the O-Dome and took the Gators down 83-73, to despite Florida players reaching double-digit scoring. Florida's Jariah Warren led UF's offense in Saturday's game with a total 25 points. Rashia Kyle trailed behind scoring 14, Kinza Salgoos with 13, and Liv McGill scoring 11 total points. McGill is the first freshman in UF history to stay in double-digit scoring efforts and lead Florida in assists for four consecutive games. With hopes of not creating a losing streak, the Gators will travel to Tallahassee on Friday for their first road game of the season against FSU at 7 p.m. And to wrap things up, three of UF's football players were awarded weekly honors from the SEC earlier today. 
quarterback DJ Lagway, freshman of the week, linebacker Shamar James, defensive player of the week, and kicker Trey Smack, special teams player of the week. The first Gator Trio awarded SEC honors in nearly eight years. Thanks, Maddie. Before we go, let's get one last check at the weather. Yeah, enjoy the warm temperatures. 83 tomorrow, 79 with a chance of storms on Wednesday, but then notice the bottom falls out with much cooler temperatures Thursday all the way through the weekend with lows in the 40s and some upper 30s. Thank you for joining us for WUFT's First at Five. We're back here tomorrow with another edition.